All right, guys. Our next guest takes on Kevin Holland next weekend, a real-life Power Ranger, and, of course, the Karate Kid, true UFC veteran with his first fight in the company over 10 years ago. How time flies. The one and only Wonder Boy is in the proverbial proverbial building, or more specifically over <laughs> Skype. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, welcome back to the show, man. How are you? Doing great, man. Glad to be on with you guys hanging out. It's always a pleasure. Hey, yeah, man. We missed chatting too. First of all, I've got to find out. I know you were in Cobra Kai. Um, we watched the season. I watched the season just uh, the other week. I got to ask me, like, what was your favorite moment of being in the show? And also, like, how random was it that after all that, it's you and Tyron Woodley of all people who did it with you after all these rivalries, all these years ago, you guys on the show together doing karate, a Cobra Cup. Yeah, man. I know he's not a karate guy either. So it was yeah. cool to have him on there. I mean, well, it, I was supposed to have a bigger part and you know, the UFC knew I had a, I mean, the UFC Cobra Kai and, and filmmakers knew I had a fight coming up that was against Bilal. And they, I told them I was going to be gone for this week because I'm going to be in Vegas for my fight. Well, they ended up, uh scheduling my main fight scene that week so i wasn't able to do it so they said they would keep me in as a cameo just a small part and then they said they would have me in for season six so we'll see what was the part that you were supposed to have i was supposed to have like i was supposed to be one of the main villains um, on the show with tyra you know tyron was uh, was a bad guy and I was supposed to be one of the main villains. I was supposed to be from Russia. Had like this big old scar <laughs> down my face, and uh, I wasn't able to do it. So they had to do some little switch, a little little you know movie magic, and ju- they kept me in there. But they said they would have me in for season six. I told them I had a fight coming up, but they decided. I guess they had a time crunch. They had to get the filming in. I wasn't able to do it, but it was really cool, man. Hanging out with everybody. Obviously, Tyron with it was really cool. Uh, we hung out pretty much the whole time, and just seeing my childhood um inspirations you know yeah um in there uh, on the show which is really cool uh, it was just awesome and they're big ufc fans what would your reaction have been if someone told you like years ago when you were a kid like when you were watching the karate kid if someone said to you hey man in the future you're gonna be in this not not the movie but like a rendition of this you're gonna be in it i would say shut your butt <laughs> that's your butt. Ain't no way that's happening, dude. It's so cool. I mean, I hope I get to be in season six, but we'll see. Uh, it was definitely a dream come true to be able to go out there and hang out with the cast and crew, and and uh, it was a lot of fun. Just just, just to see how um, how much time consuming and, and work that these guys put in, um, and it, you know, uh, just with the fight scenes, they were doing it over and over and over again. It, it was it was. Like it, it was exhausting to watch these guys do it. Wow! Uh, it, so that was kind of like my first hand look at being inside of a, of a of a film like that, you know, a TV show, just to see how they do it. So I mean, they would literally do one uh, section of a fight scene for like two hours. It was ridiculous. Wow! wow. I, I'm still steamed that like they cut your part. I heard you talking on uh, on Kevin's podcast, and I heard about this. I was uh, I was I was pretty mad. Uh, but I was going to ask you also, like, what, how different was it hanging with Tyron after all these years compared to like UFC 205 and UFC 209 lead up? Because you you guys had some like very classic like lead ups to those fights, and uh, you know there was obviously like Tyron Woodley trying to like you know trying to promote the fight with you and stuff like that. What is it like after all these years, just kind of like hanging out after all that? Dude, it's like we've known each other for years. To be honest with you, I mean he was really cool and. And, um, you know, wanted to help me out for, for the fight coming up, which we weren't able to because oh, I nice. he was filming. And they filmed in Atlanta. It was only two hours away. Uh, two hours away. <clears throat> so I got, to, I got to drive up there whenever they needed me. But um, it was just really cool, man. He, was, he would give me advice about wrestlers and fighting and not just that, but, uh, you know, um, when to take fights and uh, just kind of being a, a, a somebody who was there, been a part of the fight game, especially the UFC and, and MMA promotions longer than I, um, gave me some really cool insight in, in uh, you know, the the manager side of it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was really, really cool, man. And I, I really appreciate him doing that. And um, we just got to hang out, man. We just got to hang out. It's like I knew him for forever. Uh, and we talk about little things that happened during the fight. Like, I think it was the first fight or second fight. I don't, I don't remember, but he ends up like biting my finger 
And he, oh, yeah. I was like, you remember that? He's like, yeah, dude, I remember biting your finger. And I was like, you know, I made mean, it's funny because I had him up against the cage. And I had my hand kind of close to his mouth. And he's like, dude, I look over. There was a finger. I just bit it. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I remember that, dude. <clears throat> he's like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I was like, oh, it's OK. Let's just keep fighting. It was so weird. <laughs> The NMF in the building. Hey, by the way, by the way, and R- Ralph Macchio, he's a, f- a fan of yours. Was he a fan of your fighting and stuff? Like, did you speak to him? Wait, who? Say that again? R- I'm sorry. Ralph Macchio. Did you speak to Ralph? Yeah, Macchio? man. I got to hang out with all those guys. And they were, and like I said, they were big uh, fight fans, UFC mm. fans. So it was really cool to see them still, still going at it, man. Still, you know, because Karate Kid, when the Karate Kid first came out, um, everybody wanted to do karate, you know? Everybody. Um, I kind of remember that it was, you know, kind of it was in the 80s and uh, I was still very young. But I remember I remember people coming in because of Karate Kid. And now uh, it's the same with Cobra Kai. People are literally coming. We have parents coming in because of Cobra Kai and they started karate. I was like, that's so dope, man. It's just a big full full circle. And, and now I'll be able to see that and remember it. And like, man, I remember back in the day it was Karate Kid. Now people are coming in because of Cobra Kai. Mm hmm. But the yeah, crane, the it. crane isn't a real move, right? The crane kick, <clears throat> not a real. Oh, move. I know. <laughs> Created by the Dude, movie producers for the movie. Man, it uh, it was it was it's cool because you know it kind of keeps that that eighties vibe in the sorts, you know, yeah. in the show, which is what I love. And everything's going to eighties now. I mean, you know, with uh, Stranger Things is back in the eighties. Is everything's kind of got eighties is coming back, which was kind of like the. For me, it was like the best time. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Obviously, watching it like it, it comes through as well. We're, we're we're like jealous. We're like, man, I wish we were hanging on that set. You know, hanging with uh, with all the guys and stuff like that. But we're happy to see you. Uh, you know, being able to do that, hang out with Ralph and everybody else. Um, all right, just quickly, while we're still asking about like, oh, what's it like hanging out with such and such, dude? We saw finally you got to link up with Jack Black. Years in the making. After all these years, you got to tell us, man. What was it like hanging out with? Uh, Mr. Ned Schneebly himself. Man, Ned Schneebly. <laughs> Dude, yes. School of Rock, one of my favorite movies. He's always been a huge fan of mine, you know, not just with Tenacious D, but in acting and, you know, the Kung Fu Pandas and the Jumanjis and, you know, all the way back to um, Shallow Hal and, oh, yeah. and uh, or School of Rock. You know, he's been around this guy and he is literally the same person in person as he is in the movies. He's hilarious. You know, he's like 53 and Kyle Gass, you know, KG is 62 and they were rocking for like two hours straight. It was ridiculous. So they, they invited me and my brother, Sweet Tea to come out, get some filming and hang out with, uh, with, uh, old Jables and, and (laughs) Kyle Gass. And, um, you know, they were just like, like I said, like I've known these guys for years. It was really cool because, um, you know, one minute they're just chilling, hanging out with you, saying some of the lines that you hear them say all the time in the movies. The next thing out, they're out there on the on stage just rocking out, you know, and uh, it was fun. man. It was such a blast. Um, I think he's coming to the fight Saturday. <clears throat> so he's going to be coming out there, hanging out for the fight, uh, coming to watch, watch the watch me fight. So I think that's pretty special. Wait, so, is he com- coming to watch you fight, or is he? Are we? Are we breaking something here, Stephen? Is is it happening? Is it happening? I can't, I can't say. I can't say, but it could be a possibility. Oh, wow. Possibility. I'm not saying. I can't do it. I'm, it's a surprise. I'm, what did? What did he? What was his reaction to actually you um, using his song as for all these years for your entrance? <clears throat> man, he was he was freaked out. Like, man, I had no idea. I think it was, I forgot which fight it was. It was a recent fight. It might have been, it might have been the Gilbert Burns fight. I don't know. But he had, he had posted something on social media. He was like, dude, this year I turn on the TV and here's this kid named Wonder Boy walking out to our song Wonder Boy by Tenacious D. He's like, I'm rooting for you. And we've kind of been in touch ever since. And International Fight Week this past summer, I was out there and one of the um, photographers, uh, was out there and is like, yo, Wonder Boy, I need to talk to you. This is like mid fight, one of the fights I was out there in the crowd sitting next to Chris and Tony, Sweet Tea. And he comes to me and says, I need to talk to you. Uh, I'm also the photographer for Jack Black and he wants to meet you. And I was like, Are you kidding me? He's like, No. So after the fight, we stuck around and we got on FaceTime and I got to chat with him and it kind of snowballed from there. And now 
you know, went out, was out to one of his concerts in Wilmington, North Carolina, got to walk out on stage while he sang uh, Wonder Boy. And now he's coming to my fight. So, so cool, man. Amazing. Dream come true. Amazing. Yeah. Steve. We've been trying to make this happen for the longest, guys. I know. I'm I know. Like, oh, we yeah. have, right? And so, so this is now for all of us. Let's be honest, Stephen. This it, we, it, we, it, we, <laughs> it is for all of us. I'm just we saying, did it, Stephen. We all us. did it. <laughs> Stephen is good at piano. He will be rocking at the show. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yes. lo, lo, love to see it, man. All right, so I gotta ask this. So this this tripped me out. You're fighting Kevin Holland, but you actually were on his podcast, uh, the Realize uh, the Realize Realize podcast, and. Uh, I was like, man, like seeing you guys chatting, like I, I get it. Like this isn't, uh, this isn't like oh, every two people who are gonna fight hate each other. I get it. But like certain fighters have this kind of like mental prep where they're like, I don't want anything to do with my opponent leading up to the fight. I'm just gonna zone in. You guys are just like chopping it up. Is this the first time that you've ever jumped on a an upcoming opponent's podcast? And just what, what was that like? It was cool, man. I mean, when the when the the fight was actually announced. Um, I was in California um, doing some film for an app called Fight Camp, and uh, it got announced. The next thing I know, I got hit up in the DMs from Kevin. It was like, hey, man, it was a video. He was like, hey, man, I'm super excited. It's an honor to be able to fight you. Uh, there's a girl on my podcast who is cheering for you. Not even she's not rooting <laughs> for me. Would you please send her a video saying happy birthday? So I was like, dude, are you kidding me? Let's Let's make it happen. And then she actually got in touch with me. She said, um, you know, I want you a part of the podcast. Kevin would love to have you on. You know, we were not going to talk about the fight, but we'll just hang out. I was like, dude, are you kidding me? Let's go. Hmm. So, I mean, I mean, Kevin gets it. You know, it, some guys have to put themselves in that mindset, right? And maybe um, sooner than later, most guys like to do it the week of the fight. But Kevin was cool. He's a professional. I think he's doing it because he loves the sport. He loves to fight and uh, and just to, to, to compete. And, and that's what I do. I, I, I don't have any grudges or hate anybody out there. Just going out there and compete, you know, mano a mano, and and um, he understands that. So we got to just hang out. This is my first time doing that with uh, with an opponent on his podcast. So I had to I had to make it happen. So cool, man. I mean, what did you? And also, I was wondering, like, what did you think of his br super brief retirement after the Chimaev loss and how all oh, that man. went down? <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I think he got a pretty penny for that fight, I, I'm pretty sure. Mm. But, uh, you know, I guess at the time he was just like, you know, I'm, I made a buck. I'm just going to retire now. And, <laughs> and uh, it got people talking, you know, got people talking. And then next thing you know, uh, he's out of retirement fighting me. So um, I don't know what kind of was going through his head there. But um, I'm glad that we're making this fight happen this Saturday and, and against a guy who did very well in the 185 division, fought some of the toughest guys in the 185 division and did work. And now he's at 170. He's what, 6'2", 6'3", 82 inch reach, which is going to be fun to navigate, you know, out there in the fight, which is why I love this. You know, he, he's a great opponent um, and uh, an exciting fighter. I think this is going to be great. Super, super quick uh, side note. Dennis mentioned Shamayev. I have to ask, man, uh, we've asked you about Colby many times. We've asked you about Shamayev a few times. What do you think about this potential Shamayev Colby Covington fight? Do you think it happens? And if it does, who would you favor in that one? I don't know, man. I'm not really sure if that will happen. I don't think Colby wants it, obviously. Um, and it, especially against a guy that hasn't made weight, you know? Mm. So I, I, I don't blame him. And, you know, Shemaya is calling out the guys at 185 now, especially the champ. Um, so I don't know, man. If it does happen, they both got – I think if it goes 5-5, five, five, I think Colby's got it if it goes in the later rounds just because he's got cardio for days. And we saw the fight with, you know, Shemaya and Gilbert Burns, and, and you know, Shemaya started fatigue. And I don't know if that's because he did make weight, right? And he was mm. depleted because he killed himself to get down to 170. Um Will will he be able to do it again? I don't know. If he doesn't make weight, I wouldn't fight him. I would I would, I would say no. But um, if it's if it does, if Chamayev wins it, it's going to have to be early on in the rounds. But if it goes all five, definitely Colby. He's got cardio for days, and Chamayev's just a big one seventy. I mean, he shouldn't even be a one seventy. He should be up at one eighty five. I and mean, he was what almost eight pounds heavy his last fight. So you know. Um, that's just kind of my two cents. But uh, um, if it goes later on, I got Colby. Earlier on, it's, it's Shemaev. Mm. I wonder, Stephen, when you look at who the tougher fight for Shemaev is between Le Leon Edwards and Alex Pereira, I wonder who you think that person is. 
Because on paper, a lot of people might say, okay, Alex Pereira doesn't have the grappling, so maybe he's the easier fight for Chimaev. But you're, you more than anybody else know just how good Alex Pereira's striking is. So I want to get your, your take on this. Who do you think is tough a fight for Chimaev, Leon Edwards or Alex Pereira? I would say per- Pereira, Pereira for sure. I mean, you got to look at it like this. Number one, yes, uh, Leon Edwards' grappling uh, is very good. His wrestling is very good. It's improving daily. I mean, he took down one of the guys who hasn't been taken down in the division uh, in Usman, the, the former champ, um, and then knocked him out in the fifth round. So he's very good. But when I look at it, I want to look at size. And and um, Alex is such a big 185er. I mean, I saw a, a picture. I don't know how true it is, but he was back up to like 220 or 225 or something after he weighed in. I think it was like 220. He's massive. He's very long. He's very long, crazy reach, crazy arms, which is very difficult to take down. And I think that's why he's been successful in his last few fights. Uh, it's because he's, he's hard to take down. Um, and I think the same thing with Izzy. You know, they're very good at managing the distance, and it's going to be hard to get in on somebody's legs um, and to be able to close the gap with somebody who has great and just masterful distance management. So I think Pereira will be the tough, the t- toughest one for sure. Mm. And then just going back to another former 185er, Kevin Holland, uh, what do you think is sort of the biggest challenge about him uh, for yourself? Because at this point, like, you've kind of faced everybody, right? So when you look at a Kevin Holland, you talked about how it's kind of just like man-to-man, mono or mono. What, what's the biggest challenge about Kevin for you? Well, I mean, I think it's a fun fight because, you know, this, these are the kind of fights that excite me because this guy is good everywhere, right? He's got some submit, a lot of submissions under his belt, um, under his record. You know, he's got great darces and, and uh, anaconda chokes, good guillotines. He's not the type of guy to initiate the wrestling. Um, I'm not saying he doesn't have good wrestling, but he's not the type of guy that, that you know, that goes for it. He's more of like a defensive grappler. Um, he loves to stand and he wants to knock guys out. I think that's what made it's going to make this fight so exciting. Um, it, it's his timing. He's knocked out. He's got, and I think what makes him so powerful is the leverage he has. He's tall and he's, and he's got a great reach. He's got long arms, 82 inch reach, I think, or 81, I'm not sure. But, um, and I think that's why he gets his power. He's got leverage in his strikes to be able to go out there and navigate around that is going to be difficult. And that's what makes it fun for me. Um, and he's not afraid to do something crazy, mm. you know, a spin kick or a spin elbow or a flying knee. He's not basic. Like you see most people, most people, when you get out there, it's just a one, two, three knee or a one, two, three kick. They're, they're fairly basic. This guy will throw something, uh, you know, out of nowhere and, and land it on you. So, um, that's why I think he's, he's dangerous. Mm. Yeah, Absolutely. His reach is so long and, you know, he's so unorthodox that it's obvious that when guys get in the octagon with him, they're not expecting some of those shots to be coming from the angles and landing from such long distances. And I think he does surprise a lot of people when they strike against him. But you're one of the best strikers in the game, Steven. So I wonder when you look at like the type of striking that Kevin brings in there, the unorthodox nature of the things that he throws sometimes, how he's a little bit unpredictable. How do you see that matching up with what you bring in there, which is a lot of incredible movement, some crazy stuff that people then get to see very regularly as well. How do you see that sort of matching up with your style? I think it's going to be fun. You know, uh, it's it's definitely going to be difficult because his he's got a great IQ for it. Um, but I think it's going to be it's going to be um, exciting for the fans, but obviously for 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 me as well because I have to be on guard every step. Well, this is what makes fighting fun for me, right? It's not going out there fighting the guy that, you know, you've seen him fight once, you've seen him fight a hundred times. It's the guy that goes out there and you actually have a ha- you have to have a chess match with. You know, you have to adapt mid-fight. You gotta, you know, switch things up, or maybe you have this game plan going in, but it's not working. Now I gotta I gotta change it up when you're out there. And that's what the kind of game plan that we have going out there is and the kind of we worked in plan. We don't have a set game plan. Um, it's more of, of going out there and adapting to him and what he does. So, and that's what makes it exciting for me. That's why I have a big smile on my face right now because, it's <laughs> gonna be, you know, and anything can happen, right? I mean, you know, he lands one of those left hands or right hands on you. You, you mean, you're going to go to sleep, but at the same time, I think that's that journal of rush. That's that excitement that, um, you know, I don't have to worry about this guy going out there and just trying to hold me down or lay on me. 
You know, mm. if I knock him out or if he knocks me out, it's going to be exciting for everybody. And um, that's why I love it, man. That's why I love this game, especially a guy against a guy. It brings me back to the old to whenever I fought Rory McDonald. Oh, yeah. You know, he was, you know, he was good everywhere. And, you know, what is he going to bring? Is he going to try and take me down? Is he going to try to submit me? Like, is he going to stand there and, you know, strike with me? Like, what is it? You know, he's going out there trying to he's going for, you know, diving for my knees, that, which nobody expected. I didn't expect him to do MNRI rolls like three or four times during the fight. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, uh, it's just going to be I don't know. It, it's it's going to be fun. And I think it's 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 good for me because now I, I have really have to rely on my movement. Right. Everybody loves to watch Stephen Wonder Boy Thompson move out there. And, and with a guy with a long reach, I got to get in and get back out as fast as possible because he can hit you coming in. He can hit you uh, going back out because he has to reach to do so. So, um, you know, I got to be ready, man. I got to be on point every step of the way. Five fives, man. I, I recommend doing five fives. I love doing five fives. Even if I have a three round fight, I still train five five <laughs> rounds. I always wow. do the championship rounds. All right, man. Um, what do you think about the, the in cage chat? The what? The in cage chat from Kevin. He'll, 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 well, oh, I don't know. Yes. I don't know. You, you guys are like semi, semi bros now, but he'll, he'll probably still talk, talk some shit to you. Oh, yeah. it, it's not even shit. It's almost like just random conversations. <laughs> right, 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 right. He'll sit there and he, like, you'll hit him. He'll be like, oh, that was a good shot. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I have, I have sparring partners that actually do that in sparring. Oh, good. They, they do that. They, they'll talk to you. Cause you know, I first experienced that with Tyron Woodley hmm. and, um, never had anybody do that to me before. Yeah, out of all the fights that I've had, had never had never had anybody talk to me during a fight, and it does it gets you thinking what they're saying and not what you should be doing to them. You know, because it's it's like a mind trickery out there. So now we have you know after that fight, we actually talk to each other in sparring. So yeah, it's not. I don't think Kevin Kevin's he's not like a, he's not talking. He's not shit talking. He's just having conversation. Mm. Oh, you hit me. That was a good one, man. I got one coming back for you. You know. So I, I'm I'm used to it. I, I can't wait to see what he says, what he has to say. Yeah. Oh, as are we. Will you talk back? Will you say something to him? <laughs> Be like a mid mid fight yeah, combo. I might conversate with him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm gonna say, but I, you know, I'm just I'll wing it. I'll wing it. Yeah. I I can't <laughs> wait to see it, man. Uh, speaking of talking, it's never too soon or too early to start talking about gifts. I'm talking about holiday gifts, baby. Uh, whether it's for a friend or the friends in your pants, you can make this season a jolly one with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 and do your little drummer boy a favor. Use Lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom and then add Manscaped's incredible premium shower line, a shower collection to make yourself uh, smell fantastic, look delicious and up your confidence no less than 6,000%. Uh, I'm talking about the Platinum Package, the best value for money, and just a phenomenal gift this holiday season for you or for anybody else. And it comes with the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, the Weed Whacker Era Nose Hair Trimmer, the Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2 in 1 Shampoo and Conditioner, Ultra Premium Deodorant, Crop Preserve Anti Chafing Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner, and free gifts the boxes and the Shed Travel Bag. It's got the LED light, it's got the waterproof features, the charging, sorry, the wireless charging dock. What are you waiting for? Simply the best. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. And if you guys use the code word submission right now, you get a cheeky discount and free shipping right now. So jump on and sort yourself out with Manscaped for this holiday season. And Cass, speaking of sorting yourself out, there's only one place to go to put down all your bets. And that is with our friends at MyBookie, who are offering you guys 100% match deposit, dollar for dollar, all the way up to $1,000. And I know just like us, you've been riding the roller coaster of the FIFA World Cup. Australia, uh, getting that goal over Tunisia, bit of a rough one against France. We'll see how we go for the rest of it. But I know there's a ton of money to be made where are you going to be putting your money this FIFA World Cup? And then also, of course, UFC 282 right around the corner. Make sure to go, my, go <clears throat> make sure to go to my bookie today and use that code word submission. Get that match bonus, whether you're betting UFC, FIFA, basketball, or anything else. There is only one place to bet anything, anytime, anywhere. That's with our friends at my bookie cast. That's right. Also, uh, another week, another data breach. My missus just got her email that her details were leaked to uh, Medibank or through Medibank and their, their cyber attack. The cyber attacks are out of control. They yeah. need to stop. I'm not down with cyber attacks and I want them to know it. 
Okay, that's why you need a VPN like NordVPN that hides your IP address, protects you from trackers, protects you from anybody trying to monitor you or your data. Even your internet service provider cannot see what websites you're going on if you have a VPN like NordVPN. And the best thing of all, the best thing, the reason why we all use VPNs is to access things in other countries that we normally can't. You want to watch Dan Hardy's incredible breakdown on the Dan Hardy Breakdown Show? Oh, Sorry, Gov, you're not in Britain, so you can't watch it. Doesn't matter. NordVPN, click that one button. Now your computer thinks you're in the UK. All of a sudden, you have access to all the great stuff in BT Sport. Also, it makes things cheaper, right? You want Netflix, you make your computer think you uh, live in Mexico. All of a sudden, Netflix is cheaper. You want cheaper flights. The same flights from the same website are different prices depending on where the, the website picks up that you are from. Same thing for, for gifts. Same thing for all sorts of other websites. Things are cheap in different countries. Dennis didn't want to pay full price for the NBA League Pass, and who does? So instead of being in Australia, made his computer think that he was in, like, the Philippines or something. Bang! Instant discount. That's how you hack your way to a cheap, cheap Christmas this year. Isn't that right, Dennis? Yeah, that's right, man. And people use a lot of streaming websites to watch shows to try not to pay money for their Netflix and such. But you got to understand you're giving something up in return. Whenever you go to those websites, those ads pop up, you accidentally click into something and bang, your computer has been infiltrated. Make sure to protect yourself with NordVPN, really. This holiday season, while you travel, while you watch, while whatever you do, make sure those credit card details are secured. Make sure NordVPN protects you. And what about this? A huge, huge discount, plus four months free right now for all the submission radio listeners out there. Plus, you support the program and keep us in business go to nordvpn.com forward slash submission or click the link in the description below nordvpn sorts you out and try it risk free i really 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 recommend you try it this holiday season it's risk free with nord's 30-day money back guarantee trust us they're not just trying to sell you on signing up and trying to screw you over these guys want you to love the service that they provide and they give you an opportunity to try it for 30 days before you lock in okay so i'm just looking at this steven Tell us a little bit about what this fight means for you personally. Like, obviously, I know the title goal is still there, but are you kind of looking at this as sort of like your last attempt at making a run for the title? Or is this fight about something else for you? Break it down for us, because I know you've been doing it for a really long time, and every fight sometimes has its own narrative. Yeah, for this one, it was just trying to get somebody, you know, who wants to fight, right? Who would lie, who doesn't mind getting out there and, and, and duking it out with you and making the fight exciting. And you know, my last two fights who I knew were gonna be heavy grapplers. I didn't know they were gonna try to win the way they the way they did, but uh, I took the fight. I was like, let's let's make it happen. And after the Gilbert Burns fight, in the way that people can win it, sorry about that, guys, in the way people can win it, it just it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Like, dude, guys will win the fight just by laying on you like this. I never had anybody do that. And kind of Bilal kind of took that same uh, blueprint and kind of used it. So now everybody's trying to use that blueprint. But and knowing that Kevin will make this fight exciting is 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 why I took this fight. Right. It was kind of there were some talks about this fight happening and we finally got to make it happen. And um, just getting somebody to have an exciting fight. That's why I do what I do is to be exciting for not just testing myself and trying to, you know, be the best Steve Wonder Boy Thompson I can be, but I want the fans to be happy with the, with with what we're doing out there. And my last two fights, the, the fans just booed, you know. So I, I didn't like that. I want the guys, to, you know, the fans have to get their money's worth. And Kevin is definitely an exciting fighter, and that's why I love. That's why I wanted this fight. Mm. It's actually a pretty interesting situation that you're in because the welterweight divisions changed so much from when you first came in before. There were a lot more guys like that that would go out there, they would strike. It was more of a mix. Now, when you look throughout the division, you kind of look at that top five. So many wrestlers, right? Like it's a mm-hmm. wrestling heavy division now where it seems like wrestling is kind of the key way of people winning their fights or a lot of the fights. So what do you do to what do you do to adapt to that? I know you work with Chris Weidman. I know you work hard and you're grappling, but is there something different that you're doing that after the Bilal fight where you're like, oh man. Like, I got to do this. I got to change this around completely. Or how do you approach that problem? Yeah. You know, and when, when you when people think Steve Wonderboy Thompson, they think just striking. So, you know, I do have the jujitsu and I have the wrestling and I'm, it is getting better every day. But 
the thing what I got after that fight was being threatening, being more threatening in other ways besides my striking, right? So using my wrestling, using my jujitsu more. Um, I remember during the Bilal fight, he shot in for a double leg. And um, I think this was later in the round. I ended up getting trying to go for a guillotine and he let up. He, he abandoned the, the, the takedown because of the guillotine was there. So being more threatening, those type of situations that I want to have to be. I remember in the in the third fight in, my, in the UFC, I out wrestled my opponent. I out grappled him. And I remember going back and somebody in the UFC came to me and was like, you know, Wonder Boy, you won the fight. I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, man, thanks. He's like, just remember it wasn't your grappling or your wrestling that got you here. So I kind of oh. took the hand, you know, I was kind of picking up what he was putting down, you know, use my striking. But when you're up to this level with guys who are so good everywhere, I can't just rely on that, right? I got to be more threatening in, in the grappling situation. And, and that's what I've been working on. Hey, sorry, just just quickly before you go, I, I was uh, I read a, an article the other day. Is it true that the UFC were a little bit funny with you after that Tyron Woodley thing where he was trying to like promote the fight and and he were just like, man, why are you so mean? Is it really true that you caught flack for that? No, man, I, the UFC, they were cool with it. I thought, they thought it was hilarious, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, I didn't get any flack for that. I, now, now, the people from Fox, I think, because it was with Fox, I think they oh. were a little upset, you know, but it wasn't the UFC. <laughs> it was definitely Fox. And Tyron was trying so hard for me to just fight back, right? <laughs> he was saying so much crap, and I was just like, man, why do you got to be so mean? And he broke character, and he started, like, cracking up. I'm like, I'm sorry, but, you know, I... I, I'm not terrible at this. I'm terrible at talking trash. I know the title is one of your goals, but we also talk about uh, Nick Diaz a lot on this program when we when you come on and um, when we spoke to when we look at his timeline, it looks like apparently his neck's going to be healthy. He fought Robbie Lawler with I don't know if you saw on our show, but um, some news came out that he fought Robbie Lawler really, with a really messed up neck, which is why he looked the way that he did. He's had uh, his neck fixed up and he's looking at a return next year. I'm just looking at opponents for him. Nothing ma like makes more sense to me than potentially a fight with you. If things I, go well against uh, Kevin here, is he still a guy that you might potentially match up with? Someone that you'd be interested in fighting? Because it almost feels like a great time for you two to fight. I think so too. You know, I, I was, I've been kind of looking at this fight and this kind of, it's been brought up many times. And every time that name comes up, it's just, you know, it's all smiles on my part. So I would love to make this happen. Now, that would be really cool. So go out there and I win this fight this Saturday, you know, get my hand raised. And I, that's still that's still an option and, and a potential fight for me. Yes, 100 percent. I can't wait, man. I can't wait to see if it happens. And more, more importantly, I absolutely cannot wait to see you and Kevin Holland in there. The, I'm just going to say, like, the best of friends now. After that chat, the, the best of friends. I, I really I really enjoyed it, man, because it was just something that you never see before. And uh, I don't know, to, to, to be to be having such a cordial, relaxing chat, knowing that you guys are going to fight, it, there's just something so wholesome. Almost as wholesome as when you, uh, at the time that you said, why are you going to be so mean? Which was, it was a classic moment in of itself, man. Follow the man uh, on socials at Wonderboy MMA. And, of course, the YouTube channel, him and Sweet T just absolutely killing it, man. Catch the lead up to the fight, the reaction video, the techniques, whole lot more. Steven, thank you so much for your time. Can't wait for the fight. And more importantly, I can't wait to see if uh, Mr. Ned Schneebly is going to either walk you out or sing you out to the octagon. Thanks a lot, guys. Always a pleasure, man. And let's do this again very soon. Let's not have, let's yes. not wait a year before we can do this again. You let me know and I'm there, my friends. Thank you guys for having me. We'll see you guys soon. Legend. Thanks, Steven. Have a great evening, man. Bye. You too, guys.